All right, welcome back to remind you, chapter 17, they were rolling, 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 finally went to a stop, were bobbing up and down. Everything was chaotic. Miss Spider made a ladder that went up, and then they went up a, up a tunnel, and they're on top of the peach now. So chapter 18, we are on top of a peach. Here we go. Chapter 18. A minute later, they were out in the open, standing on the very top of the peach near the stem, blinking their eyes in a strong sunlight and peering nervously around. What happened? Oh, where are we? But this is impossible. Unbelievable. Oh, terrible. I told you we were bobbing up and down, the ladybug said. We're in the middle of the sea, cried James. And indeed they were. A strong current and a high wind had carried the peach so quickly away from the shore that already the land was out of sight. All around them lay vast black ocean, deep and hungry. Little waves were bibbling against the sides of the peach. So they're so far out in the ocean right now that they don't even see the land. And the water is so dark. They didn't say it was blue. It was black. The water was black. It was so dark and deep. But how did that happen? Where are the fields? Where are the woods? Where is England? Nobody, not even James, could understand how in the world a thing like this could have happened about. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the old green grasshopper said, trying very hard to keep a f fear and disappointment out of his voice. I am afraid that we find ourselves in a rather awkward situation. Awkward, cried the earthworm. My dear old grasshopper, you are finished. Every one of us is about to perish. I may be blind, you know, but that much I can see quite clearly. Off with my boots shouted the centipede. I cannot swim with my boots on. Oh, I can't swim at all. Nor can I, wailed the glowworm. Nor can I, said Miss Spider. None of us three girls can swim a single stroke. Oh, but you won't have to swim, said James calmly. We are floating beautifully, and sooner or later a ship is bound to come along and pick us up. They all stared at him in amazement. Are you quite sure that we are not sinking? said the lady ladybug. Of course I'm sure. Go and look for yourself, said James. They all ran over to the side of the beach and peered down at the water below. Oh, the boy is quite right. We are floating beautifully. Now we must all sit down and keep perfectly calm. Everything will be all right in the end, said the old green grasshopper. What absolute nonsense. Nothing is ever all right in the end, and will you know it? Poor earthworm, the ladybug said, whispering in James's ear. He, he loves to make everything into a disaster. He hates to be happy. He is only happy when he's gloomy. Now, isn't that odd? But then, I suppose, just being an earthworm is enough to make a person pretty gloomy, don't you think? If this... Peach is going, not going to sink, and if we are not going to be drowned, then every one of us is going to starve to death instead. Do you realize that we haven't had a thing to eat since yesterday morning? By golly, he's right, said the centipede. For once, the earthworm is right. Of course I'm right, and we're not likely to find anything around here either. We shall get thinner and thinner and thirstier and thirstier, and we shall all die a slow and grisly death from starvation. I am dying already. I am slowly shriveling up for want of food. Personally, I would rather die. Oh, but good heavens, you must be blind, said James. Oh, you know very well that I'm blind. You don't need to rub it in, said the earthworm. I didn't mean that, said James quick, quickly. I'm sorry, but can't you see that? See, shouted the poor earthworm. How can I see if I am blind? James took a deep breath, deep, slow breath. Can't you realize, he said patiently, that we have enough food here to last us weeks and weeks? Where, they said, where? Why, the peach, of course. Our whole ship is made of food. Jumping Jehoshaphat, they cried. We never thought of that. Oh, my dear James, said the old green grasshopper, laying a front leg affectionately on James's shoulder. I don't know what I'd do without you. You are so clever. Ladies and gentlemen, we are saved again. 
We have most certainly not. You must be crazy. You can't eat the ship. It's the only thing that's keeping us up. Ah, uh, we shall starve if we don't, said the centipede. Oh, and we shall drown if we do, said the grasshopper, or said the earthworm. Oh dear, oh dear, said the old green grasshopper. Now we're worse off than before. Oh, couldn't we just eat a little bit of it? asked Miss Spider. I am dreadfully hungry. You can eat all you want, James answered. It would take us weeks and weeks to make any sort of dent in this enormous peach. Surely you can see that. <gasps> Good heavens, he's right again. It would take weeks and weeks, of course it would. But let's not go making a lot of holes all over the deck. I think we'd better simply scoop it out of the tunnel over there. And one, the one that we've just come up by. Oh, an excellent idea, said the ladybug. What are you looking so worried about, Earthworm? What's the problem? said the centipede. The problem is, Earthworm said, the problem is, well, the problem is that, that, that there's no problem. Everyone burst out laughing. Cheer up, Earthworm. Come on and eat. And they all went over to the tunnel entrance and began scooping out great chunks of juicy golden colored peach flesh. Oh, marvelous, said the centipede, stuffing it into his mouth. Delicious, said the old green grasshopper. Just fabulous, said the glowworm. Oh my, said the ladybug primely. What a heavenly taste. She looked up at James and she smiled and James smiled back at her. They sat down at the deck together, both of them chewing away happily. You know, James, up until this moment, I have never in my life tasted anything except those tiny little green flies that live on rose bus bushes. They have a perfectly delightful flavor, but this peach is even better. Isn't it glorious? said Miss Spider, coming over to join them. Personally, I had always thought that a big, juicy, caught-in-the-web blue bottle was the finest dinner in the world until I tasted this. What a flavor, said the centipede. It's terrific. There's nothing like it. There's never been. And I should know because I personally would have tasted all the finest foods in the world. Whereupon the centipede, with his mouth full of peach and juice running down over his chin, suddenly burst into song. And now his song. I've eaten many strange and scrumptious dishes in my time, like jelly, nuts, and dandy parts, and earwigs all cooked in slime, and mice with rice are really nice with roasted in their prime, but don't forget to sprinkle them with just a pinch of grime. I've eaten fresh mad mud burgers by the greatest cooks there are, and scrambled dregs and stink bugs, eggs, and hornets stewed in tar. And pails and snails of lizards, tails and beetles by the jar. A beetle is improved by just a splash of vinegar. <laughs> I often eat boiled slobbages, their grand wind served beside. Minced doodle bugs and curried slugs, and have you ever tried? Mosquitoes, toes, and warm fish rose, most delicately fried. The only trouble is they disagree with my inside. I'm mad for crispy wasp stings in a piece of buttered toast, and sprinkled spines of porcupines, and then a gorgeous roast of dragon's flesh well hung not fresh. It costs a buck at most, and comes to you in barrels if you order it by post. I crave the tasty tentacles of octopi for tea. I like hot dogs, I love hot frogs, and surely you'll agree. A plate of soil with engine's oil, a supper recipe. I hardly need to mention that it's practically free. For dinner on my birthday, shall I tell you what I chose? Hot noodles made from poodles on a slice of garden hose, and a rather smelly jelly made of armadillo's toes. The jelly is delicious, but you have to hold your nose. Now come on, the centipede declared, the burden of my speech. These foods are rare beyond compare, some are right out of reach. But there's no doubt I will go without a million plates of each. For one small mite, one tiny bite of this fantastic... Peach. Everybody was feeling happy now. The sun was shining brightly out of the soft blue sky and the day was calm. The giant peach, with the sunlight glinting on its side, was like a massive golden ball sailing upon a silver sea. So they were worried on top of the peach. They didn't know what to do. James came up with the idea. Now they're all happy. Um, Centipede had a whole song about all these things he could eat. But at the end, he's like, I would give up all those wonderful things to eat for this fantastic peach. So they seem to be in very high spirits right now, floating on a peach, 
in the middle of the ocean and this peach, their boat, they get to take bites out of. Uh, so they got food covered. They got shelter covered. What are some other needs they, they should have? They can sleep. Miss Spider makes the nest for them, uh, the little hammock beds. What do they need? Huh, I wonder. All right. Hope you enjoyed Chapter 18. We will see you later for Chapter 19.